So my friends, I come to the point in my violin making here uh, where I am about to form the arching of the top. Uh, this is a Del Gesa model and um, uh, makers have different aspects of how to make the archings. Uh, one of the most common is to have templates uh, put in five places and one long arch uh, which are uh, uh, made out of uh, uh, copying uh, a nice violin uh, which well it gives a approximate uh, look of it but then you have to sort of connect all these places and uh, and the templates are often made from, uh, well, they're always made from uh, start from a like 300 year old violin, which has uh, gone through phases of deformation and stuff. Uh, I mean, a violin uh, is uh, very, uh, in the beginning, uh, you have to change the sound post a lot of times. So in uh, five, 10 years, you have risen the arching with uh, at least one millimeter. That uh, speed is <laughs> is not uh, going all the 300 years. But uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, not uh, the same arching as it was when it was new. So you start at the wrong position, so to say. Uh, then we have the makers that uh, have such great experience that they can, with the eye, uh, tell how the arching should look like. And uh, great for them, but uh, still we are just humans. So uh, I think digging deeper into that method, uh, it has some flaws too. But uh, today I am going to uh, show you briefly how to uh, use a method that I don't think you ever heard of. And uh, to me it's highly interesting and I will try to explain why. Uh, it has nothing to do with uh, measuring or anything like that, but listening. And uh, uh, you can hear when I scratch the surface in one place uh, that it has a like a scratch pitch and then I put my scratching to another place and hopefully you hear the same as I that here it's higher than You can also use another method to find out the same thing, and that is tapping from the underside. And uh, the same thing occurs that tapping here is higher than this. If you have a problem hearing this, uh, well, you can certainly train it, uh, but um, some people think the opposite. And for them, uh, this method could be a challenge. Uh, before going on with this plate, I want to show you something. This is a plastic cast of a very nice Daljesu. It's uh, the Jesu Turkish 1737. And uh, we can do the same here. The loud, it's not so loud, but still you can uh, you can figure there is a pitch on this one, and we move it's about the same. We can also tap. And then you think, oh great, 
you get the plasticast to sound the same. Well, um, I hate to uh, to tell. Well, you're partly right, but uh, there is one interesting thing with this one that maybe uh, advocates my method, because if I do here. I get that pitch, and if I do here, I get another one. I can tap. And this sounds higher here. I can tap there and there. I can tap here and here. And it always turns out higher here. And how come that is interesting? Well, this part of a violence back is always pressed out from the sound post standing here. And uh, since um, uh, the higher point should be taken away material to be adjusted down in tone. This area, uh, this uh, tapping and scratching tells us that this area is standing out. And I mean, how much will it stand out? Not much at all. But this method tells very clearly that it stands out. So even though it's, well, I said a millimeter and uh, I can stand with that, but it's uh, that little bulge the sound post has produced on this one tells us that here it's too much material. So if this was from the start, I get the absolute feeling that it would be the same tone all over, just like I told you. Okay, this could be a fluke. Uh, it was one plaster cast and, uh, well, plaster, who, who cares? This is not living material like wood. But uh, to make it doubly interesting, I have another one. It's a Strad 1710. And, uh, of course, we do the same thing here. Uh, well, scratching, no? Tapping. This point is the highest point, and of course, it's the same thing. The sound post did press this one out, so it's a little bit higher here. Uh, maybe this is not a proof, but I think it's um, enough to sort of make you think. Uh, when we look at Strad's drawings, his tools, uh, uh, what is left of them, we don't find anything that uh, tells about archings. Uh, the templates found in the uh, uh, Strad Museum, uh, I heard that was from Ceruti, so uh, it doesn't count. But uh, I think this method is really, really interesting. Uh, back to my violin. This is my violin num or instrument number 400. Uh, I made 399 instruments so far, violas and cellos included. And to celebrate or highlight this uh, making, I am uh, making clips from the actual making. So I will make the whole process from beginning to start, uh, end 
uh, how I make my instruments. And uh, I will publish them later this year, maybe end of spring, summer, or some, so, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, I will tell you everything about this method. And it doesn't stop here just by making the arching. It tells about graduation, it tells about base bar, and a lot of other things that uh, I think is highly interesting. Um, I hope you think so too. So uh, see you later. I uh, keep you noted when these clips occur. Bye for now. <laughs>